In this video, let's look at three basic structures in functional programming. By structures here, I mean sets of values and bunch of operations over them that follow some rules. I think it's easier if you just jump into the first structure. Magma is a set of values with an operation. Let's call this operation concat and the sets of values m. Concat is a function that receives two values from this set and maps it to another value in the same set. Or in other words, concat is closed on that set. As you see, magma is a pretty simple structure. So it is being used as a base for other structures. We can take magma and put more assumptions and details on it to create new structures. As I said, magma has a set of values. For example, here we have a set called m. In order for this set to be magma, we need to have a concat operation that gets two values from this set and maps it to another value in the same set. As you can see here, the key concept to keep in mind about magma is the effect of using concat remains within magma. One example of magma can be integer type with addition operator. Adding two integers always results in another integer. Some other examples are integers with subtraction, integers with multiplication, real numbers with division, arrays with array concatenation, and strings with string concatenation. All right. Let's add more assumptions on magma and create more structures. Our next structure is semigroup. Semigroup is a magma, meaning it's a set with concat operation. But in semigroups, concat operation follows an extra requirement. Concat needs to be associative. If you want to model semigroup in TypeScript, it may look like this. Unfortunately, we cannot enforce associativity in TypeScript. So the interface for semigroup will be similar to magma. We are already familiar with associativity from the category theory video. As a reminder, associativity for let's say concat operation means the order of applying concat is not important. So here it doesn't matter if we concatenate y and z first or x and y first. It means we can simply drop the parentheses. The associativity provides us a powerful model to run our code in parallel. It gives us a way to distribute work between processes, machines, and workers. But before getting into that, let's check a few examples for semigroups. We've just seen that integer type with addition operation is a magma. For checking its associativity, let's take a look at an example of adding 3, 4, and 5 in two different orders. We can easily see that the left and right are resulting to the same integer value. And this is valid for any three integers. Other examples can be integers with multiplication, arrays with array concatenation, or strings with string concatenation. For some examples that are magma, that are not semi-group, we can have integers with subtraction and real numbers with division operator. To see why these two are not semi-groups, let's check the associativity rule for them. Consider subtracting 3, 4, and 5. Are these two expressions equal? Well, if we calculate left, we get 4. But if we calculate right, we get minus 6. Obviously, these are not equal. And since we could find one example of such inequality, then integer type with subtraction operator is not a semigroup. Let's do the same for real numbers and division operator. Trying dividing values two in two different orders shows that real numbers with division operator is not associative and therefore 
not a semi-group. As I mentioned, semi-group provides us with opportunity of doing things in parallel. Imagine we have a series of concats in this order. To make it easier, since we already know integers with addition operation is a semi-group, let's use that as an example. Moving these in one line and replacing arrows with plus signs gives us a simple expression. Just don't forget, I'm talking in the context of semi-groups, and these plus signs are actually our concat operation for integer type. Since integer and addition is a semi-group, it doesn't matter which addition we choose first. For example, we can do 1 plus 4 and minus 2 plus 7 first. Since those additions are not depending on each other, and order of addition is not important, we can do them at the same time. And that is the promise of semi-groups. In the next step, we can do 5 plus 5 and 5 plus minus 3 together. And finally, adding 10 and 2 results in 12. That is one way of choosing addition operations. We can also choose each subsequent pairs of integers and continue doing the same for the next level and finally get to integer 12. The other way could be calculate the first addition and recursively continue that until we visit all integers, or we can do the same thing but with the last addition. But however we do this, we end up with the same result. This means we can define a function named, let's say, concat all that receives a list of integers and add them all. Since concat function exists on any semi-group, then our concat all logic is not depending on anything specific about integers. So we can easily replace them with generic semi-group values of the same type. That is good, but you may notice some edge cases here. What happens if we only have two elements in our list? Well, concat all can call concat on those two and return the result. What if our list has only one element? In that case, concat all can return that element as the result. But the challenge is when our list is empty. Take a minute and think about it. What should we return in this case? We really don't know. And this is a good time for us to look at our next structure which solves this challenge. It is called monoid. Monoids are semi-groups with an extra information. They have a special element which is called neutral elements or empty elements. The reason for this naming is this element acts like an identity for concatenations. More specifically, if we concatenate any element with the empty element from the set or concatenate empty element with any element of the set, we always receive that element. It's like nothing happened. This gives us an initial value for when we don't have any values yet. It acts like zero in integers for addition. And as a matter of fact, integer and addition is a monoid, and zero is the empty value for it. For example, if we try to concat 12 with 0 from either side both leads to 12 and this is valid for any integer. For integers and multiplication the empty value is 1 because multiplying any integer with 1 results to that integer. What about arrays and array concatenation? The empty value for this as you guessed is empty array. And for a string and a string concatenation, the empty value is an empty string. Examples of semi-groups that are not monoid can be natural numbers with addition and even numbers with multiplication. 
All right, getting back to our example, we have a list of numbers that we want to add or in another words, concatenate them. Let's replace plus signs with the concat operator since this is abstracted under monoid and let's walk toward our edge case but this time with monoids in our toolbox. So in case of empty list for integer and addition, the empty value is zero. In case of integer and multiplication, empty value is one. In case of a string and a string concatenation, empty value is an empty string. In case of arrays and array concatenation, it is an empty array. For the case of linked list and list concatenation, it would be nil, and many more examples. In the next video, we will look into all of this in practice. But for now, thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.